Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Jeremy, and I am pretty new in this position as the ASMED Program Manager. ASMED, of course, standing for the Arizona Meteorological Network. I've uh, been only in the position for a handful of months now. Uh, so, as what was just mentioned, the reason for the position was some of the recent retirements with ASMED. Paul Brown. Paul Brown. I am not the new Paul Brown. I am the new Jeremy Works. <laughs> you have the position of Paul Brown. Not quite. I have some of it. Yes. So who do we call when we have that? Me. <laughs> That's the sum of it part. That's right. So Paul Brown, as many of you know, Dr. Paul Brown, uh, put together as men starting in the mid late 1980s. He retired uh, early on in 2020. Uh, Bruce Russell, a long time as that staff person, really st stitched together the website and the data uh, over the decades that it's been in existence. He retired at the end of last year. So um, that's the reason I'm coming in as a uh, program manager for asthma these days. And it's not to say that I haven't been with Cooperative Extension or don't know much about it. Uh, I've been with Cooperative Extension for about the past six, seven years now. Previously, I was working in a very, uh, variety of projects, climate and geospatial sciences, um, even way back when, this is a couple decades ago. I even spent a little bit of time at the uh, point north, I think that's the direction, uh, a little bit of time at what was the Citrus Ag Center up in Mondale. Maybe some of you, uh, if you're familiar with this side of the valley, remember that uh, Ag Center of Walker Extension. So since I'm new, uh, I'm still trying to get a feel for the reach of asthma uh, throughout the state. So I want to start with a bit of conversation, real simple. First question, raise your hand if you've heard of asthma besides today, not in the last five minutes. Okay. So maybe about three quarters <laughs> or thereabouts. Do you, of those who raise your hand, do you use it in some way, shape, or form? Okay, we have... Fervent supporter, right? I like that. Okay, I'll take that too. Which stations do you use? All of them. All of them. All of them in the valley, all of them throughout the state. Or? Okay. Okay. Uh, of all the information data basically coming out of ASNET, which do you pay attention to? Which parts of it? All of it again, or are you focused on? The weekly reports, the crop maturity reports, and the heat stress on heat stress reports. Okay, great. I like to watch the camps, you know, you can get. Real time, the camp thing, and then the heat stress thing, and then you can see your temperature hourly the day before. You know, that's all, it seems to me like relatively different things. Cotton is the only problem with stress in that moment. True, very true. Anyone else? Maybe on this side of the room? Heat units in real time. Heat units in real time. Okay, very good. I used to start the if you have a plane where I have the tight event or something. And we started to actually uh, go ahead and answer this last question. We have power using the data products. So uh, thank you for that. And with that, we'll dive into some of the resources. So, as been at present, as many of you know, um, and as I just mentioned as well, some of the stations have been around since 1987, so well over a few decades. 28 stations at present in the network, ranging from uh, Tucson, Sourita, a handful in Cochise County, uh, largely throughout the southern part of the state. Over to Yuma, there are a handful of stations there, uh, as well as up the Colorado River Valley. Uh, Parker, even up in the Mojave, there are some stations, and as well here in the Phoenix area and uh, outlying areas around the metro area. We have sensors on each of these stations measuring air temperature, humidity, precipitation, soil moisture, <coughs> soil temperature, uh, solar radiation in both wind direction and wind speed. That's what we're measuring. We're also in the database, as some of you 
mentioned a few minutes ago as well, we're deriving some other variables too that are useful, including chill hours, two point, two different estimates of evapotranspiration, heat stress, heat units, and vapor pressure. Some of the data summaries and reports. Some of you just mentioned some of those that are available. Data are available on hourly time steps and daily time steps at present. And the reports, daily reports of the previous day's hourly values. Uh, you mentioned the weekly reports. Uh, we also have monthly reports that run through each day of the previous week. We also had someone mention the real-time observations. Every 15 minutes, uh, there are data coming in and posted online uh, to examine. And that's largely because um, some of the work that's been going on the last couple of years. Um, in early 2020, ASMET was very lucky to have Scott White come on board. He is really knowledgeable, has a lot of experience with uh, instruments out in the field. Um, without him, eh, we'd be in really tough shape right now. So when it comes to station reliability, which has improved over the past couple of years, a lot of that due to Scott's work, um, you know, that's something that I feel very fortunate to have stepped into as far as having him as a colleague at ASMA. Um, so if you're, you know, you're in sight of an ASMED station and you see that, that white pickup truck out there, be sure to stop by, say hi, introduce yourself, tell him you hear he's doing a great job because he really is. Um, quarterly sensor checks, going through and making sure everything is operating optimally as far as the measured variables that are out in the field. Additionally, each quarter, he's going through um, throughout the state, really. Uh, and cleaning and inspecting the stations, making sure nothing has happened since the last time it was out there. Uh, believe it or not, there's a lot of dust accumulation that goes on in Arizona and in the sensors. So that can affect your readings. For example, the solar radiation. Bugs, we've had um, raptors uh, setting themselves up on rain gauges and having their dinner there, leaving their leftovers for us uh, to unplug from the rain gauge. So all sorts of things happen. He's making sure that we're running as optimally and as reliability as reliable as we can. Uh, we have both proactive sensor replacements, uh, rotating sensors out on a scheduled basis before they fail. Uh, of course, if they fail, we must allow it in, um, as was the case during uh, what was it there too after before Christmas this year we were out in off by uh, Gila Bend unplugging the ring so. Again, Lord, that's all Scott's doing and um, wonderful work. Also doing some equipment upgrades. That's something he's been doing the past couple of years too since coming on board. Another thing that we're doing uh, at present is really upping our game with the database. Uh, modernizing it such that it is more efficiently put together and stored. Um, mentioned uh, people going back into the database for answering questions regarding past conditions, any type of analysis um, is going to be a lot easier as far as grabbing the data goes. Uh, by modernizing this, we're going to have it such that you mainly point to a spot online, URL specific URL of uh, point, and you'll be able to carve out of a database the data you need, whether it's for all stations, one station, certain date ranges, what have you. So it's going to be a lot more flexible if you have analysts working with you or consultants working with you who use this data to run, say, test pathogen models. So a lot of good things coming from that. Um, also with the database, the data coming in are updated now hourly instead of daily. So that, and I alluded to this just now, is gonna allow us to do is more efficiently put together any online type of applications that use the data. I spun this together real quickly. Um, just last fall, in response to having this new database come in and start to underpin our daily operations already. And this is really an example of um, just being able to pull data out of the database, automate it. And you know, this particular example here is helping support our manual part of the quality assurance, quality control processes that we have in place with the data coming in. Okay. Maybe not something you're worried about in terms of database functionality, but I'm sure you can understand if, you know, say in these terms where all the field prep 
that you do that is necessary to help produce a valuable crop at the end of whatever it is you're growing, that's kind of what we're doing here. We're trying to make sure that you know, the, as the database and web developers I work with say, the back end is developed well before we develop the front end. And the front end, of course, is what we're selling as far as information product, not selling, but providing in terms of information products for the public. So coming up for Azimat, uh, we're gonna continue some station upgrades. Scott gave me a lovely state of the network 2022 document just this week. Uh, we're gonna be making sure that all the equipment is standardized between the stations. We're really close to getting that. We are going to make sure that the power supply is um, working optimally and becoming more reliable at all stations. There are a few that we're gonna to try to bring up to a higher level. Um, further database development, if you go there now, you are only going to see data from local past counties. Everything prior to that, 1987, is still in the old database and still in that form. So we're going to be slowly bringing that in uh, to the modern environment. Also, uh, some modernizing going on with the website. Uh, we're going to be migrating all the existing content to the new website. Um, assessing along the way what is and what isn't being used, um, because whatever we can not spend our time on that's not being used, we can put into the development of some new online resources that are tied to some of the applications, for example, that all of you um, find helpful in terms of asthma supporting what we do. Okay, let me give you a second to read that quote. Are there any consultants in the room? Okay, this was not geared towards you. And in fact, I've been around the university long enough, you can probably substitute academic for consultant. Uh, the point of bringing this up isn't to critique the consultant, uh, nor is it to get into the arguments between consultant and mathematician, but rather to express again when it comes to developing new online resources. We're going to be listening to people like you and learning what the problems are, what your decision contexts are, and figuring out, okay, how can ASMET play a role in your making better decisions? Better decisions, whether it's um, cost savings in terms of what it is you're doing in the field, or even can you make faster decisions? So saving time. It's another aspect of that. Um, and so that kind of leads into finishing up here, and we're back to the Q and A uh, that we started with as well. Went through that first handful of questions earlier on. Uh, now, what is it we do? Or more more uh, appropriately said, what is it we're not doing at Asma? Ah, hand went up right away. I don't even finish the question. I would like that. you. The ability to set a alarm parameter and I get a phone call or email to some condition on a station is met. Okay. So humidity. Humidity being too high. So it'd be too high. Concern or too low? When it reaches a level, okay. I get a phone call. I mean, there's stuff there that you can put in the field, but I can imagine, you know, guys who live out boss, temperature limit is stiff. But there's some user. To find a way to individuals set their own alarms, that would be super helpful. Okay, so that would probably need to tie into the real time system because hourly frequency may not be frequent enough for those types of issues that you're describing. Otherwise, you stay up all night and you keep the question. Right. Okay. Okay, that's really good. I can, yes, I would write that down and put that in the in the queue for working with the database uh, web developers that we have to upgrade, modernize, make more useful of this. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Very good. Yeah. On the button link on level one of the two piece charts, it would be really nice to have a ongoing chart that charts level one to level two. Date, like so on July 14th, I could go into the Maricopa site and I could 
Okay, so better data visualization on some of these variables as they change over time. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not even in, doing it incorrectly. Um, it kind of came up in talk about about so temperature dependent organisms and how quickly, how frequently should we be monitoring? I couldn't. I tried to look at multiple years and compare them to the population's increase, but I couldn't copy and paste that into Excel. I had to hand that, print it out, and then capture all of that data. So I couldn't simply go through and look at a month and a half worth of temperature day after day after day, highs and lows, and just copy and paste that into it. So, there are ways to, even with the old database, uh, they're common to limited text files. And so, there are ways to read that in depending on your software application. Uh, but in thinking about as we migrate to the new database and bring in that historical data, um, having um, making sure there is some functionality there on the output of what you want out of the database, um, that will be something to look at. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> okay. Um, well, if anything does come to mind in the future, uh, email is the best way to contact you. Now, and um, thanks again for your time this morning. And I'll turn the show back over to thank you, Jared. Um, let's see. <laughs>